Not too long ago, we took a look at this brand new controller from old school, the digital controller for the GameCube. It's supposed to be a clone of the Hori digital pad. In my review, I explained some things. We opened it up, took a look at it, and not having ever used the original Hori controller, I didn't really have much to compare to. I thought it was a really good controller, but it could be better. We did wind up swapping the D-pad because that was my main complaint. A lot of the things I mentioned in that video, people who had the Hori digital pad said it was very similar to what they thought about the original, that it seemed to be a pretty spot on clone. Now I do have the actual Hori digital pad here to do some comparisons. Dinerto Designs, who follows my channel, he let me borrow this from him. So I'm gonna be taking a look at this, opening it up, comparing it. So I did take one of the old school controllers, swap the D-pad, because in Street Fighter Alpha 3, I wasn't able to pull off the Hadoukis, the Dragon Punches, the Hurricane Kicks with ease. I eventually got, you know, kind of used to that D-pad and it worked out fine. But after swapping to a Super Nintendo D-pad with the membrane, it, it was great. Now I just plugged this one in and I want to test it out. The original Hori digital pad, kind of see if I could pull off moves with this D-pad. The first thing I immediately noticed comparing between this and the new version is yeah, it's pretty much 100% spot on clone as far as the mold goes, the way the buttons sit, how everything looks and feels for the most part. Like the start and select buttons do have a better, more, I don't know, like it's just a better feel than these ones, but that's not a big issue in my opinion. The M, the Shoulder buttons, I was gonna say analog, this doesn't have an analog stick. The shoulder buttons, um, they both feel pretty similar. Uh, these ones have a little bit better of a feel than these. Like, I don't know, maybe this one's been worked in a bit more, but as far as like the button presses, everything feels pretty spot on. So let me see if I could pull off uh, some moves in training mode. Hadouken's just fine. Dragon Punch just right off the bat, Hurricane Kick. So yeah, I would definitely say the Hori D-pad is definitely better than what comes stock with the old school version. Now, maybe I just got used to the D-pad on this one because I was able to start pulling off moves in this game with this. It just took me a while to get used to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in a stock one and see if I'm still like having trouble with it or if I just got used to it. Like is the D-pad the same? So what I'm gonna do, I have a couple of these uh, new old school controllers that I'm gonna put in um, original Super Nintendo parts for the D-pad and um, possibly the, uh, the start button as well. We'll have to see how that works out. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna get these all swapped out to better components. Most likely, since I already have you know a couple of these and I have just one, I only need one, um, I most likely will have these posted on my web shop, madpixelshop.com uh, for sale already pre you know, modded, uh, just gonna be charging, you know, what I paid. Maybe a few bucks more to cover the, uh, you know, the uh, fees that I have to pay, but that that's about it. If you're interested, take a look. I, I should put up at least one or two of them. Okay, so this definitely feels stiffer than the Hori pad. And yeah, the, the D-pad's definitely a lot stiffer. I'm, I'm, I'm able to pull off moves decently well. Maybe I just got, really used to this D-pad because when I first tried it, I was having a lot more difficulty. Everything does feel a little bit more stiff, but not horrible. You know, this thing's going for like 200 something dollars. These are 20 bucks. If you swap the components, if you could find decent components, uh, you know, it, 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 that could be the challenge here. I'm using like original Super Nintendo D-pads from like a lot of Super Nintendo controllers that I got from Japan that were either missing the cable, was cut, uh, the shell was cracked, that kind of thing. I would take them and like refurbish them, try to make one good controller out of like two or three type of thing. But I have spare parts. So these are what I used in this and it works great. Let me plug that one in real quick. Like I said, we're gonna open up the, uh, the fresh uh, old school and we're gonna open up the Hori in a second here. So this is with the new D-pad and immediately it does feel better, but like I said, I think I may have just got used to the D-pad on the other one, but it does feel a hell of a lot better with this D-pad. Now, if you go out and you wanna get one of these controllers and you wanna swap the D-pad yourself uh, and just buy like off the shelf 
components. The, the problem is, is myself and a few others have been buying like third party replacements to see if we could find ones that are closer to originals to feel better in these old school controllers. And everywhere we're looking, we're getting like something similar to this, where you have that whole like crosshatch, that tic-tac-toe groove in there. The originals have the groove too, but it's not extended beyond the conductive pad. I don't know if you could, how well you could see that, but like it goes all the way up and it makes some like doing diagonals a, a little more difficult. With this, it's fine. With these, it's, it's a little, it's a little more harder. I bought these off of a uh, console five and they're, they're no good. They're pretty similar to what comes stock in there. So let's just go ahead and open up the Hori and the uh, old school. I wanted to see, cause people I think had tried, but like original shoulder buttons from a Super Nintendo controller. I don't think they'll fit because of the uh, little metal beam, but we'll, we'll check on that in a second here. So let's shift the angle and take a look at the Hori. Let's open that up. The Hori has a, a, a shorter cable, but you know, I guess that's all right. It's probably like a five foot cable. Whereas the old school has a 10 foot cable, quite a bit more distance. Would have been awesome if they came out with a wireless option since we're not using like, you know, rumble or anything anyway, could have like wave birdified one of these Hori digital pads. That would have been kind of cool. Maybe somebody will do that. Retro fighters, retro bit. Somebody, maybe. I've been telling all these guys for a long time. Like, where's our, our clones to the Hori digital pad? Old school did it and they did a fine job. Like if I were to rate that controller now after using the original Hori pad, if I were to rate that, that I would give it a solid eight out of 10. Solid eight out of 10. It does feel a little more cheap than the Hori, but it's pretty much a one for one mold. Uh, the buttons feel very similar. It's just not quite the same with that D-pad. Okay, here we go. Immediately, immediately, we do see that it is uh, better looking on the inside. The, the, the quality here is quite a bit better looking on the inside versus the, uh, the old school. Let me get the, uh, the old school open too. We may as well just open both of them. Like we won't get the screws confused because they're black on the old school and you know, they're silver on the, uh, the Hori. So there's the, uh, the Hori compared to the, uh, the old school, definitely a, a better looking board and whatnot. Like I said, with the uh, old school, these like ribbon cables can be sensitive on there. You gotta be careful with those. On the Hori, you have actual cables twisted together, soldered in there. So if, if you were servicing this thing um, and you accidentally, you know, remove those cables, be easy enough to get them back in there. Whereas on this, it, it shouldn't be too much more of a problem, but it just seems like the old school, these things, any controller that I've seen that have used these, they just, they're not like on there that great to where they're, they're just really sensitive. So you have to be careful with that. Let me go ahead and take this out. So there's the, the full old school board taken out. There's the back. Here's the triggers. They're similar to Super Nintendo style triggers, but they just have the, the, the through hole thing, just, you know, the pegs molded on there instead of a piece of metal. Um, it's the same as the Hori pad. That's how this one is as well. So let's go ahead and uh, see what the, the membranes and whatnot look like on this. There's that side of the board. Looking good, looking solid. There's the other side, the shoulder buttons, whatever you want to call them. Somebody got offended that I called them triggers before, but you know what? Shut up. It's all right. So as far as the, the inside goes, very similar looking, but definitely the, uh, the Hori has some better quality membranes in there. Like I'm not too worried about the start and select, but as you see, like the, uh, the D-pad, it has closer to what the, uh, the Super Nintendo style one is. So that's nice. Doesn't have that going all the way through the, uh, the grooves. Whereas the old school one, it has those grooves going all the way through, just like the replacement one that I just showed you. Where is it? The same exact one. <laughs> it's the same exact one in there. And these are just not that great for diagonals. So I would be wary buying replacements of these off of places like uh, Mortoff Games and uh, Console 5 if you're hoping to get a better feel D-pad. So keep that 
that stuff in mind. Let's go ahead and get the actual D-pad out of the uh, the hoary there. There's that, looking nice. Very nice membrane, very, you know, not crazy thick, but thick enough the way she likes it. Don't wanna go too thick. So there's that. I'm gonna like reassemble the hoary off camera. I'm not too concerned with that at the second, at this second anyway, but it is a great feeling controller, but for, you know, 200 plus dollars can be a little crazy, can be a little bit crazy. So on the old school, we're just gonna swap this stuff. Let's get this out of here. This is the D-pad membrane it came with. We'll put in a Super Nintendo D-pad if it fits. It might not fit. Some of them don't fit from what I've heard. Like there's gonna be variations here. And yeah, this one does not fit. So you're gonna have to be careful with that as well. So this one's slightly bigger than the one that I put in the, uh... yeah, it's, it, it might be, it might be. So we may have to just, yeah, good thing we're doing this. Like you gotta be careful there. And I heard this as well from uh, uh, De Nerito, uh Designs that he was having issues with some uh, components as well. So that's one thing we have to keep in mind. This D-pad should be fine, but it is like, is it slightly bigger? It like doesn't really seem so, but it just doesn't wanna fit in there. It's, it might be just a hair bit bigger. But there's nothing inherently wrong with this, so as long as the the uh, the membrane fits in there, we sh we should be okay. I'm hoping anyway. Yeah. So there's there's the membrane in there. Let's see if the uh, the triggers will fit in there from the Super Nintendo. So the D-pad, no, but the D-pad membrane should be fine. We'll get that reattached, like put together, and then test it out. But let let's see. Which was the original? Oh, these these are the uh, these are the ones that came off of the uh, the old school. These are ones that came off of the Super Nintendo. I really hope the uh, triggers work because it'd be a like it would suck, you know, sacrificing components from one controller and only getting the membrane out of there. But you know what? That feels pretty good. All right, let's see how this D pad functions. You know, there's going to be those variations between uh, controllers, so let's let's find out. So this with the new D-pad membrane and the shoulder buttons swapped out to original. Not too much of an issue. So there we go. You know, after having messed with these controllers, modifying the old school, comparing everything, I still think the old school controller is a solid alternative to the $200 Hori digital pad. Stock, this controller is fine for most things. If you wanna play Street Fighter Alpha 3 and you're competitive on the Game Boy player with it, then yeah, you may wanna change out the membrane on the D-pad. Putting a, you know, original Super Nintendo membrane in there, it feels great. But as we learned, not every part from every controller is going to fit. This D-pad right here from the Super Nintendo controller that I had that I wanted to put it in here, this is slightly too big, it won't fit in there, but the membrane's fine. Whereas another Super Nintendo controller, I swapped the D-pad, no issues, and it feels great. And then we did get the uh, shoulder buttons in there. They're, you know, a little, a little loose, I guess you would say, but not much more than what was already with the uh, stock old school. They feel fine, they feel a bit better. These were kind of stiff to begin with. This just has a nice more, uh, oops, worked in feel, in my opinion. Whereas this, you know, ultimately the Hori digital pad, the, the shoulder buttons are a hell of a lot better than anything else that I have here. This controller, definitely the quality is there. Out of the box, you don't have to modify anything, it just feels good. Whereas this, you, you may want to change at least that membrane here. There's not too much of a difference here. 
the button presses feel very similar. And even the audible sound that I get from them sounds very similar. The one thing I noticed, like I said earlier, the start and select, they do feel a little different, but who really cares? The other thing too that I noticed is like the the, the Z button on the Hori feels a, a bit better than on the old school. I don't know if it may be the membrane or whatever, but overall definitely an awesome alternative to paying all that crazy money for one of these. You're getting the quality here, but if you just want something in that same form factor, this is a great controller. Don't have to modify anything. If you're playing most games in the Game Boy, the stock D-pad should be fine. If you're not worrying about those diagonals at all, you should be good. So I wouldn't worry about it too much, but I just wanted to see, you know, making this thing better. Why the heck not? After comparing the two, I'm happy with this. Like I said, check out my website, madpixelshop.com. Appreciate you guys watching. Big ass thumb button in your face. Peace out, bye-bye, and boom.